Hi, this is Christopher Girl, and we're going to be talking about Trinity Sunday. Well, you guys all know about the Trinity. Right? So we say the, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit all the time. Uh, but before we begin learning about it, let's just say a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, good and loving Father, we thank you for the goodness that you are, for all the good gifts that you've given us. We thank you for this beautiful day and this time to glorify you. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came down to earth to be with us, to live with us, to teach us how to be humans to live as your sons and daughters, and who died and saved us. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit who lives within us and gives us energy and fire and drive to go out and be your church in the world, to change the world and set it on fire for love of you. We ask all of this and say all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So how do we believe this as Christians? We believe that there are three persons, but one God. And obviously, it's a great mystery that we will never be able to wrap our whole minds around, but it's something that we continually learn about and continue to go deeper in. Now, this might help. <laughs> it's just a little chart, and so we can know that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And we know that the Father and the Son are not each other, and the Son and the Holy Spirit are not each other, and the Holy Spirit and the Father are not each other. But we know that all of them are God. How does that make sense? Well, if you can kind of think that there was God... Uh, and before creation, before anything, actually, this didn't take place in time. It's just the way it is. You have God who always existed and does exist and is existence himself. And so when God thinks about himself, when he self-reflects, it actually, I mean, since he's so powerful, since he is existence itself, his isness itself, when he thinks about himself, it causes more isness. It, it is more isness. And so the father thinking about himself is the son. So this reflection of the Father on himself is the Son. So when God thinks about himself, there's actually another person within this same God that is different. So that's the Son. So you have the one who's thinking and the one who's thought. You have the one who's speaking, the one who is spoken, the one who gives, and the one who receives. So you have the Father and the, and the Son. Now, the Son and the Father, now that there's these two persons loving each other, um, you have this love between them. The love is so powerful. Since God is existence itself, his love, the love between them, actually is a person. It is the Holy Spirit. It is something itself. And so now there's these three persons all loving each other and giving themselves to each other and receiving each other. And so you have this beautiful communion of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now this didn't take place in time. There wasn't a point in time when God's like, oh, I'm going to think about myself. There's going to be a son. And then we're going to love each other, and then there's going to be Holy Spirit, because God's outside of time. That's just who God is. God is this self-reflecting and self-loving communion of persons. And so, as Christians, we believe that we too were made for communion. If we were made in the image and likeness of God, it means we're built to be in communion, loving each other and receiving the love of another. You think about marriage. God said the two will become one flesh in marriage. And we know that. Physically, that happens, but we also know that spiritually and by our hearts and in our minds, husbands and wives are intended to be united and become one. And that's an image, it's a reflection, it's a symbol of God, who is this communion of persons, this relationship of loving and giving love and receiving love for each other. And so, believing that God is one God and three persons isn't unreasonable. It's reasonable. We can think about it, kind of make sense of it. But again, it's beyond our minds. We'll never be able to fully wrap our minds around it. But it is reasonable, and we can think about it and question it and try to figure it out a little bit more and more. That's what a mystery is, and that's what our Christian faith is about. So keep continuing to pray to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and keep asking for the Holy Spirit to help you know who the Father is and who the Son is, because he'll guide you to them. So hopefully that provides a little context when we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll remember who and what the Trinity is. Christ, peace.